this is a brand new engine that GM condemned, and we're going to figure out why it was. While the automotive world was obsessing over electric vehicles and predicting the death of internal combustion engines, General Motors quietly made a move that sent shockwaves through Detroit. They're betting nearly a billion dollars on a brand new V8 engine, and the timing couldn't be more surprising. We are here at the General Motors Tonawanda engine plant, where they build their V6 and V8 engines, and some four cylinders. At a moment when everyone expected GM to double down on batteries and motors, they pivoted hard back to gasoline power. This isn't a small side project or a nostalgic farewell tour. This is a massive strategic investment that signals something important about where the car industry is actually heading versus where we thought it was going. The $888 million bet nobody saw coming. In early announcements that caught most analysts off guard, General Motors revealed they're investing roughly $888 million into their Tonawanda engine plant near Buffalo, New York. That's not maintenance money or a modest upgrade. That's transformation-level investment to build an entirely new generation of V8 engines from the ground up. The plant, which has been cranking out engines for decades, is getting a complete overhaul to produce what GM calls their sixth-generation small-block V8 architecture. The shock factor here isn't just the dollar amount, it's what the money represents. For years, GM and other major automakers have been loudly proclaiming their commitment to an all-electric future. GM specifically set a goal to go completely electric by 2035, phasing out internal combustion engines entirely. So when news broke that they were pouring nearly a billion dollars into new combustion technology, people started asking questions. What happened to the electric revolution? Why would you invest this heavily in something you plan to kill off in just over a decade? The timeline makes it even more interesting. Production of these new V8s is scheduled to begin in 2027, which means GM is planning to sell combustion-powered vehicles well into the 2030s and likely beyond. You don't make an $888 million bet on a technology you plan to abandon. The investment covers new tooling, manufacturing equipment, facility upgrades, and the engineering infrastructure needed to build engines that meet future emission standards while delivering the performance truck and SUV buyers expect. This isn't just keeping the lights on at an old factory. This is betting big that internal combustion still has a profitable future, at least for certain types of vehicles in certain markets. What makes this sixth generation V8 different? GM isn't just building the same old engine with a fresh coat of paint. The sixth generation small block V8 represents a genuine technological leap forward in combustion engine design, even if that sounds contradictory in an age of electric motors. The new architecture will launch in two displacement options, roughly 5.7 liters and 6.6 liters, giving GM flexibility to match engine size to vehicle requirements. But displacement numbers only tell part of the story. The real advances come in how the engine burns fuel and manages the thermal energy that process creates. GM claims the new V8 features what they call new combustion and thermal management innovations, designed to extract more useful work from every drop of gasoline, while minimizing wasted heat and harmful emissions. Combustion chamber design has been refined to promote more complete fuel burning, reducing unburned hydrocarbons and improving efficiency. The thermal management systems represent a significant evolution from previous generations. Modern engines generate enormous amounts of heat, and managing that heat efficiently affects everything from performance to emissions to longevity. The new V8 incorporates advanced cooling passages, likely with more precise control over coolant flow to different parts of the engine depending on operating conditions. This allows the engine to reach optimal operating temperature faster when cold, which reduces emissions during warm-up and maintain precise temperature control under heavy loads, which protects components and maintains performance. The efficiency improvements matter for more than just fuel economy, though GM obviously wants to reduce consumption where possible. Better efficiency means less heat rejection, which means more energy going into moving the vehicle, rather than heating up the atmosphere around the engine bay. It also means the engine can meet increasingly strict emissions regulations, without sacrificing the power and torque that truck buyers demand. Performance claims suggest these engines will deliver more horsepower and torque than the current generation, while using less fuel and producing fewer emissions. That's the holy grail of engine development, and it's extremely difficult to achieve. The fact that GM believes they can pull it off speaks to how much engineering effort has gone into this new architecture. 
We're talking about advances in materials, combustion modeling, computer control systems, and manufacturing precision that simply weren't possible or economically viable in previous generations. Why GM is reversing course on its EV promise. The shift back toward combustion investment looks like a reversal, and in some ways, it is. GM spent years building up its electric vehicle credentials, announcing the Ultium battery platform, committing to an all-electric future by 2035, and positioning itself as a leader in the transition away from fossil fuels. So what changed? Market reality, for one thing. While EV sales are growing, they're not growing as fast as the most optimistic projections suggested they would. Consumer adoption has been slower than expected, particularly in certain vehicle segments and regions. Meanwhile, demand for traditional trucks and SUVs, especially large ones with significant towing capacity, remains incredibly strong. And here's the uncomfortable truth for automakers. They make substantially more profit on internal combustion trucks and SUVs than they currently make on electric vehicles. Battery costs, despite falling over time, still represent a huge portion of an EV's price. The supply chain for EV components remains challenging, with bottlenecks in battery production and raw material sourcing. By contrast, GM knows how to build combustion engines profitably. They have decades of experience, established supply chains, and production processes refined to extract maximum margin. Walking away from that profit stream before electric vehicles can replace it financially, not just symbolically, started to look like poor business strategy. So, there's also the infrastructure question. The charging network build-out in the United States and, honestly, around the world is moving forward but not at the pace needed to really support mass EV adoption anytime soon. Range anxiety is still, well, a real thing for a lot of folks, especially for those who use trucks for work or recreation out in areas far from any charging stations. Now, GM's strategic pivot isn't really about giving up on electrification. It's more about admitting that this transition is going to take longer than anyone first thought, and that internal combustion engines, especially the new, advanced, efficient ones, will stick around in the lineup longer than that 2035 target suggested. You could call it a more realistic timeline, or maybe you'd call it backpedaling. Either way, it really reflects the actual market GM sees right now, not just the idealized version they were hoping for. If you're wondering where these new V8 engines are actually going to end up, just take a look at GM's truck and SUV lineup. That's honestly the natural home for this technology, and it's where the business case makes the most sense. Full-size pickup trucks, like the Silverado and Sierra, large SUVs, such as the Tahoe, Suburban, Yukon, and Escalade. These vehicles represent some of GM's most profitable products, no question. They're also the vehicles where electric powertrains face the biggest challenges. Towing capacity is a huge consideration. When you hook up a trailer behind an electric truck, the range drops dramatically. Physics, well, it doesn't care about your environmental commitments. The energy needed to move a heavy load up a mountain pass is just the energy required, plain and simple. And, you know, batteries currently just can't match the energy density of gasoline for these demanding applications. The typical truck buyer who tows a boat or camper regularly isn't really ready to plan routes around charging stations or accept a 50% range reduction when loaded. They want to fill up in five minutes and keep moving. Consumer demand in this segment, well, it remains strongly tilted toward traditional powertrains, especially among buyers who use trucks for actual truck things rather than just commuting. These customers value proven technology, long range, quick refueling, and the confidence that they can handle any task without worrying about battery percentage. The business case for GM is clear. Keep these high-margin customers happy with increasingly efficient combustion engines while electric technology matures. This also gives the charging infrastructure more time to expand and battery technology more time to improve energy, density, and reduce costs. Meanwhile, GM protects its profit margins and market position in segments where it's traditionally been strong. The reality is that electric trucks and SUVs exist now, including GM's own Hummer EV and upcoming electric Silverado, but they're serving a different part of the market. The new V8 investment suggests GM believes there's room for both and that the combustion segment will remain commercially viable for years to come. 
GM's decision to invest heavily in new combustion technology doesn't exist in a vacuum. Every other major automaker is watching and recalculating their own strategies. Ford has been aggressive with electric vehicles, launching the F-150 Lightning and Mustang Mach-E, while investing billions in battery production. But Ford has also continued developing its combustion engines and has made no indication it plans to abandon them anytime soon. The competition between Ford and GM in the truck market is intense. And if GM shows up in 2027 with a significantly more efficient and powerful V8, Ford will need an answer. Stellantis, the corporate parent of Ram, Jeep, and Dodge, has similarly committed to electrification while continuing to develop high-performance combustion engines. The fact that GM is putting this much money into V8 development might embolden Stellantis to extend its own combustion investments rather than rushing toward an all-electric lineup. Toyota has been perhaps the most cautious of major automakers regarding full electrification, continuing to invest in hybrid technology and even hydrogen fuel cells while developing battery electric vehicles more slowly. GM's move might vindicate Toyota's more gradual approach and encourage other manufacturers